All right, welcome back everyone to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about all things related to nutrition and of course, kidney health. Now, if you watched the last episode we had, we talked about what is creatinine. This is sort of our fundamental series where I really want to make sure all of you understand the basics of all of those things that are important to know about kidney disease. And then we start to dive into all the treatments, all of the different modality, and all of the things that you should be able to know, understand, and improve in your own lives going on. So with that, let's focus on GFR today. Now with GFR or glomerular filtration rate, in this particular topic today, we're going to cover the five stages of kidney disease. What are those factors that affect GFR going on? How can you improve your GFR? And how do you actually calculate GFR? But more importantly, what is it and why should you care? So let's start there. So what is GFR? Well, GFR is simply a measure of how well your kidneys filter waste and excess fluids from your blood. And it's actually measured in terms of milliliters per minute going on. Now, a healthy GFR means that your kidneys are able to get rid of those toxins while they're functioning properly. And of course, the lower that number, the lower the GFR going, the less there is of the kidney's ability to be able to perform its normal functions going on. So let's talk about what are those normal numbers and what you should know. So when we talk about GFR, remember higher GFR, the better it is for the most part going on. So a normal GFR in an adult is typically above 90 mils per minute going on. So above 90 minutes is usually normal. Why do I say usually? Because if you're spilling protein in the urine, you may still have a GFR that's normal, but you actually have the earliest sign of kidney disease, which is spilling protein in there. So we're going to talk about the stages in one second. But remember, when we calculate the GFR, there's actually two ways to measure it. One is to measure it directly, and the other is what we call eGFR. So everything we're talking about today is really about eGFR. That's where we use things like a person's age, a person's sex, body size, ethnicity, um, other stuff going on, including using values like the serum creatinine, we put it in a formula and then we get a number out. Now let's dive into what are the five stages of kidney disease you need to know and what does each stage mean in terms of GFR. So when we say there's stage one kidney disease, it means that the GFR is greater than 90. In this particular stage, the kidney function is normal, but there may be signs of early kidney damage, such as protein in the urine going on or other stuff that may be seen on imaging studies sometime. Now, stage two is about 60 to 89 mils per minute. That would be where what you're starting to see is the kidney function is actually starting to decrease and we really want to start taking action early, especially here, because there's a lot of stuff we can do to prevent progression and in some cases even reverse it. Now, stage three, oftentimes you'll hear the stage threes, there's a stage three A and a stage three B, but stage three is a GFR of 30 to 59 mils per minute going on. Stage three A is essentially a GFR of about 45 to 59. Stage 3B is about 30 to 44, 45 going on. So that's sort of the breakdown as far as the GFR. If you have stage 3, stage 3A, stage 3B, it's incredibly important that you're talking to your doctor. And if it's stage 3B, remember that's a GFR below 45. If you're there, it's really important to work with a nephrologist and a renal dietitian because you really want to go ahead and invest in those healths. But in my opinion, if you're able to talk to someone who's knowledgeable about kidneys earlier on, it's always a good idea so that you know what are those steps you want to be able to take. Now, stage four is where we start to see a significant decline. It's defined as a GFR 15 to 29. And this is where we really start to prepare folks for potential kidney replacement therapy or dialysis. And we start to prepare folks for kidney transplant. So there's a rule that I have that I started about 10 years or so ago. Uh, 
time flies, it's actually about 14 years ago, which I call the 15-20-25 rule. It's a very simple rule. When somebody is less than 25, it becomes incredibly important that they learn about renal replacement therapy. So and dialysis, what are the different modalities, transplant, what happens there? We start those conversations at less than 25 on the GFR. When they get less than 20, it's time to get them on the transplant list and it's time to start working on getting the access ready for dialysis. If it's a fistula, then they would be putting that in the arm. If it's a catheter for peritoneal dialysis, which is done at home, they would be maybe even burying a catheter going on there. Then we get to stage number five. And stage number five is essentially kidney failure. This is also known as end-stage renal disease. This is where you do need to go on dialysis and dialysis is needed for survival. This is also where if you're able to get a kidney transplant, this is where you want to make sure you get that transplant. Now, in terms of improving your GFR, let me give you five actionable items that you can start to do right away to start improving your GFR and definitely slowing it down. First is you got to understand the three big things that cause kidney disease diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. If you have any of these three going on, these are absolutely modifiable. So you have to start addressing them right away. Don't waste time. Work with your provider, work with your dietitian to make sure that you're doing this. Number two is a healthy diet. As you know, on this channel, I've always advocated moving towards mostly plants. The more you go down on the spectrum of more plants, the better you're going to feel. This is not about who has the best diet, the worst diet, etc. This is about progress over perfection. So what you want to focus on in your diet is the lower the salt, the better. You want to make sure that on the potassium side, when you have very little kidney disease, potassium actually lowers blood pressure. As kidney disease gets worse, you can't get rid of potassium, so it becomes very important to cut back. Phosphorus is really important to control. Animal-based phosphorus is twice as bad as plant-based phosphorus. The absorption is more, and it causes all of these calcifications to occur in your body going on. And so as we start to think about a healthy diet, you, there's no absolute right answer, but the more plants you eat, the more plant predominant you are, the healthier you'll be. Number three is exercise. There's no way around it. It doesn't matter if you're 110 years old or if you're two years old. You need to move. The body is designed for movement. And the beautiful thing is, is the little bit of stress that exercise creates translates into a better, stronger version of you. The most important thing is make every day a day of movement. In terms of minutes, you might have heard about 150 minutes going on each week. That's all fine. But I really think more is better when it comes to exercise, meaning every day you just want to focus on moving. Whether your goal is 5,000 steps, 10,000 steps, it doesn't matter. Pick a goal, make it every day as part of your life. Number four goes without saying, but don't drink alcohol and don't smoke. I know a lot of people enjoy alcohol, and that's not the point here. The data shows that there's no redeeming qualities behind alcohol. There just isn't. And when it comes to kidney health, alcohol makes it worse. And of course, smoking makes it incredibly worse. And if you want to ask the single most important thing you can do if you smoke, cutting smoking. It's never too late. And if you do it today, it will make all the difference. And number five is be careful about medications and supplements. There's a lot of supplements that may have heavy metals. They may be cheap and they're not regulated. You want to make sure you're getting the quality kind that a third party tested so you can know what you're getting. You want to talk to someone who's knowledgeable, such as your nephrologist or your renal dietitian. So you can go through all of the supplements you want to take and you're talking about them to make sure they're fa safe. On this channel, you might have heard me talk about things like turmeric, for example. And there's so many nuances that comes to taking the right form. And we'll talk more about that in another video. Now, the next part is, how do you calculate this EGFR? 
Well, there are several equations that we end up using. The most common ones are things like CKD Epi, Cockcroft Gold, and MDRD. These are all fancy names, but just realize that the most common one people are using these days is the CKD Epi. This is the one that's most widely uh, used by most organizations like National Kidney Foundation, etc. going on. Cockcroft Gold is another one. MDRD is another one. Essentially, all of these equations, they take into account things like gender, creatinine, age, and in some cases, even things like ethnicity. Now, there's a push to remove the ethnicity from these equations going on. And the question is, what will that mean as far as the overall validity? More to come on that. But what you want to know is EGFR is exactly that. It's an estimated GFR. And so even though it's not exactly accurate, it's good enough to give us a very good clue of where you are. And more importantly, we want to be able to take the trend going on. So there you have it, an overview of understanding your glomerular filtration rate, understanding five things you can start doing about it right away. And remember, no matter where you are with your kidney disease, there's so much you can start doing right away. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions you want to hear about, any topics in the future, just drop them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, share it with your friends and colleagues. And I would really appreciate your support as far as future episodes goes. Thank you so much.